So I was feeling really excited and maybe just a tad nervous to, uh, to get this job going as I knew I'd maybe be a little bit over my head with this. Uh, my dad was a mechanic for 40 plus years and I did learn a lot from him along the way but perhaps I should have paid uh, just a little more attention um, as I'd probably know a little bit more than I do now but anyway. That's what the internet's for. And I was able to scour YouTube, look up all kinds of videos. There's such a great community of Vanagon people out there um, that really helped me along the way to give me confidence to tackle a project like this. So here we go. Uh, brake and suspension rebuild on my 1984 Volkswagen Vanagon Westphalia. Okay, first step, let's uh, get this caliper off. There's two bolts in the back here. We're gonna loosen those off, and that's the first step. So pulling the brakes and steering knuckle off was actually pretty straightforward. I took a few photos along the way just in case I needed a reference for when putting everything back together. And in hindsight, probably would have been a great idea to have just a few more of those. Also, doing one side at a time is an especially good idea for someone with, let's say, a less than stellar amount of experience. So, now that I've removed the steering knuckle, I need to press the new ball joints into a late Vanagon steering knuckle that will accommodate the big brake kit from Small Car Performance. Next up, I remove the anti-roll bar and drop links, along with their very crusty old bushings. I'm pretty sure none of this has been replaced since the van was new in 1984. And this all came out fairly easily, and it was onto the radius rods. So for the radius rods, I wanted to try and keep the alignment as close as possible, so I measured the distance between the nut and the end of the bar so I could match it up when reinstalling. I even counted the threads on the rod as another way to compare the old to the new. Then I went to work on the nuts holding the radius rod to the lower control arm. And with a little penetrating juice, these came right off without much work. Next, I loosened the nuts on the end of the rod and popped the old, very hardened bushing off the end. And this was all going very smoothly. I was starting to feel just a little bit pro. I figured at this point that the rod would just pretty much fall right off, but I really had no clue what was to come. So, we've got these nuts off the bottom. It's loose on this end, and she's still pretty solid, so I'm going to try and tie her out of the way. I'm going to try and get these guys kind of loosened up a little bit. If I can get those to turn, then I think we'll probably be able to get the whole thing down. Let's, uh, let's give that a shot. So at this point, there was really nothing holding these bolts in place except for 38 years of corrosion. Shoot a little juice in there and basically just start moving it. Back and forth, just a little bit at a time until the bolts come loose. Once I got one moving, I moved on to the other two. And man, these things were in there tight. But if I just took my time, everything should work out just fine. Well, I've been beating this thing senseless for about an hour. I broke off two bolts. What we don't want to do is break these. Yeah, I broke them. But at very least, after some major blows with the Tanya Harding, I was able to knock the radius rod loose, which felt amazing. I still had these rusty bolts to remove, however, but after several hours and some very choice language, I finally surrendered, took the control arms to his shop to have them pressed out. Okay, so the lower control arm is all put back together. We're all cleaned up, painted. Get some new bushings from PowerFlex put in there with uh, some provided grease. These were the beast. Got nice new bolts in there and uh, all ready for reassembly. It felt really good to be starting the reassembly process. 
clean and new or at least newly painted parts were a welcome break from all the grease and dirt. I got these installed quickly and torqued to spec. Next up, I needed to clean up the frame where the new radius rods and bushings attach. All was good on the driver's side, just needed some wire wheeling and some fresh paint. The passenger side, however, was a whole different story. The old bushings had long given up, and the rod was literally sawing its way through the frame. So, I really needed to make this hole round again. I used a piece of copper plate as a backdrop so that I could weld in some filler material, and this worked really great as the weld would not stick to the copper. After some filing and grinding, I had a nice round hole that fit the new bushing perfectly. Now things are really starting to come together and I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. I got the new Schwenk springs installed as well as the Bilstein shocks and it was on to mounting the new hubs. With the hubs buttoned up, it was time to move on to the brakes. First off, the new and much larger rotors and then on to trying to figure out how the spacers and carriers fit to the knuckle, which ended up being pretty straightforward. That way. Once I got the carriers in place and bolted in, things were starting to look really good. Everything was aligned perfectly, and it was on to the brake pads. And finally, the calipers. I got them bolted in, and all that was left to do was torque everything to spec and run the brake lines. way so that it will hook up into there and then my braided brake line goes from here up to the top and yeah, we should be good. I think I've got this all figured out now. Thanks so much for your help everybody that uh, weighed in. I just got that nicely using the existing bracket that was there and coming up to here to uh, all tie in. I don't think there's any crazy bends in there. There's no kinks, it's all good. Now the only thing I'm a bit worried about is this, which seems to be just a little bit loose. Uh, I can move the, the washer in there, which uh, I know I'm supposed to be able to do, but once I kind of whacked it into place, it seems to be maybe a little looser than I would like. So I have a feeling I'm gonna be uh, replacing the nut on here, but anyway, let me know your thoughts. I'm taking the shock off, I notice there's a little bit of rust spot which I ground out here a little bit and I'm ready to weld her up through. So I've done a bit of work on that, welded her up and uh, yeah, looking pretty good. It's ready to accommodate new springs. There are these pads that were on there before, these guys, and obviously not much left of that. It's pretty Pretty nasty. I probably could have put it back on, but I ordered some new ones, which should arrive here on Tuesday. And then I can uh, put the new pad on top, put the springs in, put the shocks in, and then the suspension system and braking system are done. I just bled all the brakes. So it looks like I got pedal and uh, should be kind of ready to go. Man, it's so good. Just cruising along at like 55, 60 miles an hour. And, uh, the controls on the on the steering is this like fingertip control, beautifully straight on the road. The alignment made all the difference in the world. Uh, when I was I first took it for a ride after doing all the suspension and brakes and everything, uh, just felt a little bit sloppy. 
and now it just feels tight and um, like a much more modern car. Yeah, happy cruising. I've been experimenting with some different types of content here on the channel, from building stuff to adventures, and of course, my beloved Westie. Um, it, I always love to hear from you guys, so please drop me a note in the comments and let me know what you think. And if you did enjoy the video, a thumbs up is always appreciated, and subscribing to the channel is super helpful. Uh, once again, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.